Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today I am here with Darby Simpson of the Grass-Fed Life podcast. Um, and he's a longtime uh, pasture animal raising farmer. So it's gonna be really great to sit down with him or stand up with him and ask him some questions all about how he got into farming, how he's raising pigs, cows, uh, and birds as well. So uh, Darby, welcome and yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to me. Sunny California. Yeah, it's been yeah. A, it's been a great day today. We got these amazing blooms behind us, and um, so yeah, I'd like to ask you first, how did you get into farming? What drew you to it, and, and why did you choose animals? Yeah, so um, so I honestly like I was really interested in farming even as a really young guy uh, when I was like five, six years old. Um, that was about like 1980. Uh -huh. I'm dating myself a bit, but um, my grandfather actually quickly steered me away from farming. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, like small farms were just going under left and right. Yeah. And it wasn't a great time to yeah. be a farmer. So he said, go do something else. I went and did something else. That something else was kind of getting in, into the uh, mechanical engineering space. Mm -hmm. So did that for a while, but always kind of had this itch, this urge to get back to the farm. And, um, you know, once I got into like my early thirties, I started doing some research and I actually first found guys like Elliot Coleman, yes. uh, yeah. who's a fantastic, I'd all, almost call him like half farmer, half mad scientist. Yeah. He's amazing. He, he paved the way for a yes. lot of us. <laughs> right. And so that led me to Joel Salatin and uh -huh. others. And I actually thought I wanted to be a market gardener oh, wow. early on. Uh -huh. uh, but for me, it was just a very prayerful decision to, to go into livestock. Um, okay. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of my my genesis into farming. It was total career transition and uh, figuring out like how to provide for a family when your income is over here and you want to migrate it to something different has, has been tedious, uh, but it's something we did successfully. So when did you start farming? What was like when, when yeah, you first so, got your first animals and right. what did that look like? Uh, so I started doing a whole lot of research, I'll say in like 2003, 2004, and I definitely fell into the um, analysis paralysis crowd. Yeah. And I uh, sure. didn't actually go and do anything until 2007 mm -hmm. and uh, I went and and volunteered work for a day on a farm in central Indiana which is mm -hmm. where I'm from mm -hmm. and um, got a lot of good tips and pointers and learned a lot but at the end of the day uh, Alan who's who's kind of a friend now he's like you know at some point you got to quit reading books and quit quit reading mar magazine articles and going to conferences and get your hands dirty and just try something mm -hmm. so I ordered 50 broiler chicks um, you know, kind of our story is like I had 600 bucks. That's what I could afford to lose. Yeah. I had a stay-at-home wife slash mom with two young kids, single income. There wasn't a whole lot of extra money, uh, so I, I did a salton style system. Mm -hmm. I built an eight by eight salton style tractor, put 50 broilers in it. Um, being an engineer, I'm very pragmatic. So I followed his advice to a T, started giving the birds away just to get some feedback, got to the fourth nice. person, nice. and they're like, oh yeah, no, that sounds great, how much are they? And I'm like, you don't understand, they're free. And she's like, no, you don't understand, I'm gonna buy three of them now, how much are they? So I kind of scrambled and <laughs> put together a spreadsheet and I'm like, well, I think this much per pound. She's like, yeah. great, put us down for three. And that like that just, cool. that was the that was the jumping on point was 2007 with with that first 50 birds wow that's really cool I, it's it's really interesting that these really fantastic customers kind of just come our way to support us and they um they love our products and what we're doing so much and it's yeah it's so interesting every farmer i talk to they you know, they have those people that are like, hey, like I want to pay you more for your stuff. I understand what you're doing and how good this food is for our family. So, right, yeah, cool. and that's definitely been something we've experienced. And mm -hmm. now kind of on the flip side of that, we have people that come to us saying, well, we're seeking out real food mm -hmm. that exceeds any kind of certification you can get mm -hmm. because we have a family member that has cancer or we've yeah. got these food allergies or whatever it is and we get to help be a part of their solution for health and that's very rewarding for us yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it is for me too as well you know we're we're uh we're growing their medicine in a way right you know? right so i love that oh so i, I wanted to talk a little bit about the grass-fed life podcast that you do with diego footer and i'm going to put a link in, down in the description to those podcasts and where you can find all of uh, Darby's information, his website and uh, social media as well. The Grass-Fed Life podcast um, is something I listen to 
because I'm in the future I'd like to have land and I'd like to uh, raise some animals for myself and, and customers and kind of integrate them into a larger perennial system. So it's something you know, I really appreciated learning from you um, and the other people on the podcast. Right. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And um, what is the podcast about? What, do you, what topics do you guys cover? Sure. So, um, well, it's it's uh, we cover a wide wide variety of, of episodes. It's uh, myself, my business partner Diego Footer. Um, you know, I, I'm on a lot of the podcasts. Mm-hmm. Diego is it's every podcast. You know, that's kind of. Uh, his side of things is he's he's become very journalistic and in interviewing farmers. We'll have some different guests on, mm-hmm. obviously that you've heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but kind of the 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 genesis of the podcast was to start something on the livestock side that was like super helpful. Um, and kind of my my whole thing, the reason I wanted to do it is I, I've uh, I do enjoy teaching, I enjoy sharing, and I, I truly believe in the regenerative agricultural movement, particularly with livestock. Um, so kind of my goal is just to share my experiences and what I've learned and like what has worked and hasn't worked and and really what I'm all about at the end of the day is is trying to help people avoid uh, stepping on a landmine which is really easy to do with with livestock because you get into some pretty big numbers pretty quick Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's way different than the veg space where if you have you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars of capital to invest in the veg space I mean most veg guys would tell you like you can buy almost everything you need yeah. with that seed money. And mm-hmm. while that's kind of true definitely for, for poultry and and absolutely for pigs, when you start getting to like larger ruminants, cattle and sheep and fence and land, like it gets, expensive. It gets expensive fast. So we're really trying to help people maximize yeah. what seed money they do have mm-hmm. um, and, and be as profitable with it as possible. Yeah. But we cover marketing we cover how to we cover like uh, business uh, branding um, all the different like programs the ways we sell stuff mm-hmm. uh, we do a lot of problem solving we have guests on um, you know we've actually started uh, something new which is called an insider so we've got some more in-depth interviews yes. on, on the insider where we're having a guest come on and it's kind of like what are you you know they're farming what are you facing like what are your hurdles and then it's myself and Diego and and this other person and we're it's it's like it's like a live console yeah ba- basically totally. and we're trying to help them like work through these problems to, to grow their business or to deal mm-hmm. with cash flow mm-hmm. or production or how do I market I don't want to do farmers markets how do I you know yeah. whatever it is yeah, yeah like I found it inc- incredibly helpful trying to think about yeah, how what does a business like this even look like or you know how do I raise these animals and keep them alive? And what is the, the living situation look like for them? How am I rotating them? So, I mean, it's just really multifaceted. So I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in getting into animal agriculture in any sort of level. Um, on that note, how would you recommend people get into animal raising if they want to look into it? You know, would they start with chickens or cows first? Or well, you know, what scale? Yeah, that's... Um that really gets into a lot of contextual stuff, which is something that we're really big on dealing with on the podcast. Um, one of the, um, uh, we, we've got some online courses and probably one of the, the modules in the online course that I'm personally most proud of that I did is all on enterprise selection. So it actually walks people through some, um, you know, uh, hypotheticals. Uh, pros and cons mm-hmm. of poultry, pork, beef. Oh, like, really what, does, what does that look like? And then on the flip side, like Diego covers a lot of like holistic context. Mm-hmm. Um, you've kind of got to marry the two together a bit. I mean, you got to do a little self examination. Now, finances may dictate that. You know, I started out with 600 bucks. Yeah. Now, last year our farm sales grossed well over $200,000. Oh, so we, we, we started with 600 and we've gotten to that point. We, we do we have a little bit of farm debt not a ton um, so we've kind of grown slowly reinvested profits uh, we started with chicken because I had six hundred dollars like that wasn't so is that the nut. cheapest animal enterprise that you can it's, start it's with? the least expensive it takes the least amount of knowledge certainly mm. they're not scary they're small you're not breeding them you're right and the thing is the ROI so yeah. it's like an eight to nine week thing mm. you, you can you, okay well now I've got a saleable product 
Right. It's like a lot of vegetables. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas a pig, if you go buy a weaned pig, you're talking about six months. If you go get uh, a 12 okay. month old calf, you're talking about another 12 to 18 months. Okay. Wow. So you're really laying your money out for a long time. Yeah. So that's, I think that's one reason that a lot of people start with chickens. Yeah. Uh, I can make a great case for pigs though, for, for a lot of people that are mm. watching this, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pigs may actually fit better from a contextual standpoint. Interesting. Based on region of where you live, uh, access to markets, uh, people are definitely willing to pay more for pork than they are chicken. Okay. But at the yeah. end of the day, for a pound of protein to produce, at least for me in my region, central Indiana, like we can produce a pound of pork for just a smidge more than a pound of poultry. Interesting. But it holds a higher value. Okay, that's really important. And it yeah. also kind of works better in a lot of ways if you're working a full-time off-farm job because they don't have to have uh, as much hands-on care throughout the day. They're a bit more uh, able to, to take care of themselves during the day while, while you're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the chickens can, <laughs> they die really easily. So. Uh, chickens, <laughs> if it's hot, like you've, yeah. you, somebody's got to be there to water them. Yeah. You know, if the water are clogs, you can have a lot of problems. Yeah. But they're not scary, and that was for, even though I grew up on a farm, uh -huh. like I didn't have any livestock experience, and I'm like, okay, well, I can handle a chicken. Like I can, yes, if it yeah. gets loose, I'm just going to chase around and pick it up, you know. <laughs> uh, if a cow gets loose, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a big animal. It's a big animal. It's kind of scary. So uh, those are those are some of the reasons I think okay. people start with poultry, but yeah, that doesn't sense. always mean it's the best right. choice. Yeah. Yeah. So how are you raising your uh, your different animals? Could you kind of describe the process of, of sure. the basics of the chickens, the pigs, and the cows? Sure. So as I mentioned, like I found Joel Salatin, so I'll say that that was kind of my jumping on point. Yeah. Um, we still really mimic a lot of like his systems. Uh, we've definitely made some changes, I would say improvements that are more geographic mm -hmm. related for us mm -hmm. uh, from those systems. but. Yeah, pasture poultry, it's getting moved every day. Mm -hmm. They're in chicken tractors. Mm -hmm. Our pigs, we run in the woods. They're able to, to forge some. They still get supplemented with grain. Nice. Um, our beef, though, it's like it's 100% grass fed, 100% grass finished, no grain. That's awesome. Uh, daily rotations there during the mm -hmm. growing season. And then we do make some hay on farm to supplement in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, the cows at this point are what really make me tick. Like that's because really, yeah. we're building soil. Yes. That's... I mean, we're collect, we're harnessing solar energy mm -hmm. our solar panel is the grass mm -hmm. and we're converting that free energy into nutrient dense beef yeah and it's amazing it's, it's an amazing thing oh and by the way we're building soil holding water and sequestering carbon all at the same time yeah. I mean, it's cool it's the way it's meant to be it's cool yeah, yeah it's so cool yeah so you know obviously you're into regenerative farming so yeah absolutely this is this is why it's you know we're getting all these different benefits from all these different angles it's Super, yeah. super fantastic. Yeah, so and then like kind of the driving force behind Grass Fed Life was like believing in the mission, mm -hmm. having that personality where I really enjoy teaching, I enjoy problem solving and helping others. I wanna I wanna see them be successful. I mean I, I wanna see small farms everywhere. Me too. And Me too. that's that's the mission of Grass Fed Life. There are free resources out there, there are paid resources out there, but it's just trying to help people the learning curve is so steep. Yeah, you're talking Big about some can be some pretty substantial money. Yep, we're trying to help people cut down the learning curve, cut down the big mistakes, avoid big type A errors, be profitable, faster, happier, still married. Yeah, yes. get to spend time with your kids, like a yeah. good quality of life, because and 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 earning good money, because these are things that a lot of farmers struggle with, mm -hmm. and we're just like. Trying to develop these models right. you, for people to just tap into and right, start exactly. using. Right, exactly. Trying to have some like off-the-shelf resources yeah. and things like a private uh, community Facebook group where you can yeah. go out there and say, "Hey, this is my newest design for my banner. Like, mm -hmm. what what do you guys think? Or you know, we got these three designs. Give me some feedback. Or I'm dealing with this problem in the brood. Like, whatever it is, uh, yeah. where they're rubbing elbows and helping each other, spurring each other on." Yeah, yeah, that's really fantastic. And it's something that's really exciting me about the the internet and the small farming movement that's kind of starting to explode right now, I've, I've seen, is that we are all now helping each other, sharing resources, right. learning from each other, and it's making it such more accessible to get into farming and becoming more profitable from the beginning. Right. And that's important. Um, you get into this because you're inspired. Yeah. 
you get fired up, you've got energy, you've got idealism, and that's wonderful. Like I, you have to have those things. You've also got to have a lot of grit and a lot of determination. But I'm telling you, like those only get you so far. And when you, when you get two to three years into this, and kind of like what I've seen when I've done some one-on-one -on -one consulting, mm -hmm. that's the tipping point. Like if people can't figure it out, to where it's like, I, I got to make money with this. Like I'm spending time, I'm spending energy, which I have become so much more aware mm -hmm. of time and energy like they're almost more valuable than money yeah yeah um yeah. we want to see these people not quit at right i haven't started or i'm two or three years in like we want to see them be successful mm -hmm. and that's why we've poured so much time and energy the last three years into grass-fed life is to, to have these resources um available for people to make use of so that you're successful successful before you run out of gas right before you run out of idealism and energy that you start with that's that's what we're trying to help people do yeah that's really great yeah that's what's really needed right now i think to if we want to go away from large-scale agriculture we need literally hundreds of thousands of successful yeah. small-scale farmers in the animal industry and in the veg industry the orchard fruit industry all of these uh, beekeeping everything so right um, the more of us out, out there sh sharing our ideas and teaching you know the better and providing all these great resources like the grass-fed life podcast and um, oh, i was gonna ask you about your customers i guess like, yeah who, sure who you're absolutely selling, who you're selling to and how you do that yeah absolutely Although after today, I'm a little, I've always been very, and like, I do not ship, don't ask me to yeah. ship, I don't believe you in know, it. You know, Joel, I just listened to Joel on a recent podcast, he's starting to ship now. So, so he used, here's he used to be the thing, super so anti that. Diego leaned over and goes, so what are your thoughts on, on aggregate? I'm like, I'm open to it. And he was like, <laughs> really? I, I think and it's he, a big and, deal. and he just sat there and I said, it's one thing he said. One, hmm. one thing he said helping the guy that lives out in the middle of nowhere who wants to farm have a way to sell his stuff so he can earn a livelihood. Now, am I the guy to do that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need these aggregation companies I know to it, make small farming work really well. I, I, I'm with you. I was yeah. with Peter Allen a couple of weeks ago and he's like, Amazon's going to destroy yeah. us all if we don't figure this out. I, I agree. That is what is it is coming. Like, yeah. And we need to figure out a way, like how do we can compete on convenience because that is the new norm. And um, so we can just create our own systems that are mimicking Amazon and, and right. doing this. And I, I think that is kind of the direction forward. Right, we and that's, 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 a lot of, um, that's a lot of what we're, we're addressing here today at this, this workshop with, with Paul Grieve is mm -hmm. looking at Paul's system like, okay, well, Paul, you didn't start out doing $2 million a year in business. Just like me, mm -hmm. he started out with 50 birds, but he's gone from 50 to where he is now, which is like 7,000 a week. Yeah, that's crazy. In five yeah. years. <laughs> in five years. Yeah, and I've really been in impressive. this for 12 years, you know? Um, so it's trying to help people, like, I think overcome some of the mental hurdles and mm -hmm. obstacles that we all have with, like, shipping product, the cost of shipping product. Mm -hmm. So currently, how are you selling your, your meat? Are you doing CSA, drop-offs? How's yeah. that look? Uh, so we have predominantly, and we, we've got about nine or ten different ways we sell product, but really two of those account for like 80, 85 percent of our sales. Uh, farmers markets. We do a lot at farmers markets. Um, that's just kind of where I started. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think farmers markets, particularly early on, like if you're not opposed to learning how to deal with the retail side, like yeah. you can capture all the dollars. Yeah. Uh, so you can get the full price for your products. You can mm -hmm. set the price. It's, it's an instantaneous way to show up, set up a booth, mm -hmm. and get access to hundreds or thousands of unique customers on a weekly basis that if they didn't want what you have, they wouldn't give up their Saturday morning to walk around a high school parking lot mm -hmm. to, to shop. It's right. a very inconvenient way to get food. Right. Uh, then we also do a lot of bulk. That's really come, at least in our region, back in vogue of <laughs> families getting a half hog whole oh. hog, a, a quarter cow, half cow. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and so that's, we, we do sell a lot of stuff that way. We've seen, to some degree, a progression of, from, you know, going from the farmer's market to bulk, like they kind of migrate. Mm -hmm. um, so you get them as a customer first at the market and then right. 
Yeah. Right. And then we've got a bunch of other things we do. We'll do like, you know, holiday boxes, which is like a, a, a mishmash of, you know, beef, chicken, pork at yeah. a set price with a discount. Um, we've done some subscription type stuff. We do a frequent buyer program. We've got all these other like little things where we're just trying to meet different customers where they're at. Um, that's really gotten us to the point that we're at today with that, that $200,000 in annual sales. But like to take that to the next level, yeah. that that's why you come and listen to a guy like Paul, right? Yeah. Um, because it, it's, it kind of becomes a different beast at that point. Like you can mm -hmm. continue to do farmer's markets Farmers markets are phenomenal to a point, yeah. and then you, you. I'm gonna say you. Kind, most of us kind of sort of hit a wall, and like it's a go, lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I, I'll tell you, particularly for meat, I don't know about yeah. vegetables. Mm -hmm. Like hiring somebody doesn't really work, particularly when it's an animal. Like they want to mm -hmm. meet the farmer, know the farmer. Uh, makes sense. This is a living, breathing creature that died so we can have sustenance like they've got questions right yeah, it's not oh more. these beautiful are these beautiful orange carrots chemical free yes yeah. well i'll take two yeah. you know like it's it's just a, it's a it's a totally different ball game yeah you're right yeah yeah you're right and i i've noticed for myself being being the farmer at the market selling it it, it really lends to the whole story and people yes. uh um, customer retention and people coming back and buying from me you know they want to see me here updates about what I'm working on and doing. Super, re It's a super relational way to sell stuff. Yes, it is. I, I found it even like really good for learning, um, learning what my customers want and just getting better at sales and, and talking to people. And, yeah, well, like one, the one thing uh, I never expected was uh, to have to learn how to read body language. Mm, yes. Somebody like, you, <laughs> and now I'm just kind of, I can sit back, like I can tell when somebody's just ready to whip out their wallet and buy something like they just walk up and I've never seen them before I'm like what can I get out for you today yeah versus the person that's like if, if you if you get closer than than 10 feet from me I'm gonna run and scream right yeah. so it's just kind of a hey how are you if you have any questions let me know and I'll right. physically take a step back so they don't mm. feel threatened like it's it is it's it's unique it's, it is it's very and unique. it's retail and it's not for everybody um, which is why I like learning about systems like Paul is using mm -hmm. with, with shipping, with distribution, with scaling up, with aggregation. He's giving other farmers the opportunity to have a, a way to sell their product. Maybe they physically live too far away from a farmer's market. Right. Or, um, you know, maybe uh, they just really want to focus on farming. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a then, lot of us do. That's right. all we want to do is just farm and not have to deal with the sales. And like, I think that's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, you know, and that all goes back to context. Yeah. I, again, something we talk about in our courses is like, it's totally okay to say farming is going to be a part-time income. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a full-time income. Yeah. Or it Absolutely. could be a full-time income for two or three or five people. Like it's whatever you define it to work for you in your context on your land base. Yeah. Um, and I, all those things are okay. It doesn't have to look like Joel yeah. or like Elliot or any of these other greats that are out there in the space. Like it, it, what it needs to look like is what works for you, what works for me. Yeah, yeah I really like that sentiment. I think that's very true. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, we shouldn't get stuck into one line of thinking, my farm has to look like this, and, you know, I have to sell like this. There's just so many ways to enter this market and be a part of this um, farming, farming movement. So, um, you know, I just recommend keep listening to, to voices like Darby and, and all these different people out there that are, that are sharing this great message. Uh, so Darby, how can people find more out about your farm, about your grass-fed life podcast? Sure. Where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, grassfedlife.co. Uh, if you want to listen to the podcast or some blog articles out there, uh, things of that nature. Um, if you're interested in going deeper, you can, you can also look on that side. You can look at farmbusinessessentials.com. That's like the main website for our, our full online course. Okay. Um, and again, Grass Fed Life, we've got free resources. We've got resources that are $5 a month. We've got uh, courses that, that go up from there, you know, um, really just trying to uh, meet people like where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, that enterprise selection module I mentioned, that's yeah. actually in that, that $5 a month, what we call the insider. If you're thinking about farming, and I don't care, like it could be, it's applicable for, for, for veg yeah. or livestock or honey or fruits or whatever. Like it's, that's, I, I talk about it obviously from a livestock perspective. Like I think that module is 
it, it will it just helps put you on on the right foot mm -hmm. for, out of the gate yeah. um, to learn more about our farm it's simpsonfamilyfarm.com uh, if you're ever in the central indiana area you can look us up We're, we do a, a farmer's market weekly one in nice. the summer one in the winter um, so that's that's how you can connect with us and you can okay. you can follow us on facebook and instagram as well what's the instagram and facebook uh, at Simpson Fam Farm, Simpson Fam Farm oh. on Instagram and uh, Simpson Family Farm on Facebook. I'm gonna put a link in the description to all those different websites and his social media, so you guys can follow along. Uh, Jarby's just a really knowledgeable person uh, in this farming field, so highly recommend checking out more of what he has to offer us.